Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. You know, I'm staring at a stock chart today, and I, I realize that this is a real estate investing radio show, and we, we talk about investing in real estate and how investing in real estate can change your lives. But I'm, I'm just finding it very curious. See, the stock I'm looking at is GameStop Corporation. Now, back in the day, GameStop was, you know, the epitome of where you went to get all of your video games. You know, back in the day when my kids were younger and, you know, not in college or graduated from college, they had things like the Xbox. They had things like the PS3. They had something called a GameCube. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know if I'm, I'm in the right era with all of these things. I just remember buying these systems, giving them to my kids so that they could have entertainment and pleasure by playing some video games. Now, of course, we didn't let them, you know, go crazy and, and make it an addiction for them, but it was an opportunity to do something when they were bored or an opportunity to have a friend over and play video games with the friend. Well, over time, the entire video game market, well, it's evolved. It really has. And when social distancing kicked in, and we were told to stay at home, and we were told not to go out and about. Places like GameStop, which could have been a great haven for us, you know, when we're locked down and we're looking for sources of entertainment that don't include streaming services, that could have provided us an opportunity to get games. But, now here's the big but, the entire gaming industry transformed. They found different ways to deliver content, which didn't necessarily have to do with going to a GameStop store. So as a result of that, I think some of the relevance of GameStop, you know, it, it kind of went away, you know, and, and when you can't physically go to a store now, granted, I'm sure they've got a online presence and you can probably order stuff from there. And, and I'm not turning this show into a show on GameStop or GameStop stock, but I think it's very important to note that industries and businesses, they have a tendency to change over time. Most businesses go through like an initial phase, kind of a startup phase, and then they go through kind of a, a growth phase. Uh, if they make it to the growth phase where they expand and then they get to another phase where they, they continue to provide the products or services that are necessary for their customer base. And then over time, they get into kind of a decline. In other words, what they were doing for their business model was either becoming less effective or it was being replaced by something that was more effective. Well, at the end of the day, I, th I think GameStop kind of got caught up in this business maturity cycle. And as its consumers started buying content in other locations. And as they probably struggled with ways to compete with that competition, maybe they didn't have the foresight. Who knows? And again, I'm not trying to get into the, the mechanics of GameStop. Well, over time, the value of the stock for GameStop, it went down. Because in the stock market, stock prices have a tendency to be based on valuations of the company. It also has to do with the future performance of that company. So stock analysts like to look at, you know, what has the company done? What is it they're planning to do going forward? And how is that going to impact 
income streams and revenue streams in, in, in all aspects of the business model. Well, for a long time, GameStop, and according to the stock chart I'm looking at, was trading, you know, in the neighborhood of, I don't know, between 10 and $20. Okay. I mean, it, it would go up, it'd go down, go up, go down. And then all of a sudden back in January of this year, right around the 12th, according to my stock chart, the stock seemed to do something different. It seemed to go up a little bit in price. It kind of hit a new high of around $20. And then the next day, it hit a new high of about $38.65. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy stock movement, right? And then the next day, it hits a high of $43.06. And the next day, it kind of stays where it's at. And all of a sudden, right around, let me get back to the stock chart, because I hit, I hit a button and something clicked on my computer, so I apologize. I lost my track there. So right around January 22nd, the stock just kind of starts taking off again, and it hits a new high of about $77. And then the next day, excuse me, actually, that was a weekend. So on the 25th, it bolts again. Now the stock is hitting a high of $159. The day after that, it hits a high of about $150. And then lo and behold, out of nowhere, on the 27th of January, this stock blows up to a high of $380. Now, it's not done because the following day, it hits a high of $483. And then the day after that, it starts falling. It drops down to a high of $413 with a low of $250. And today, I'm just watching the stock price of this thing. And since I've been on the radio, it has been fluctuating between $244 and $251. That, my friends, is called volatility. When we come back from the break, I'm going to get into that. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. So in the four minutes we've been away at break, GameStop stock, the price dropped again. So going into the break, it was hovering around $245. It's now down to $236. Oh, now it's up to $237. Well, wait a minute. It's back down to $236. Okay. My point is this. There are things going on in the market that you and I, we have no control over it. We absolutely have no control over it. I mean, if you bought GameStop stock, say, I don't know, back in October, and maybe back in October you picked it up for a, you know, a pretty good price, maybe around $10, and you held that stock, and it you know, kind of fluctuated a little bit, kind of went up, kind of went down, whatever, and then all of a sudden you wake up in the end of January and the price is, you know, looking at a record high of about $483. What do you do? What do you do? Do you sell it? Do you buy more? What do you do? What do you do? And, and what caused that stock to race up in price so dramatically? We're not sure. We're just not sure. I'll give you my assessment of what's going on. I think there are major, major players in the marketplace. And these players are giant entities that are gambling. Yeah, that's what I think they're doing. I think they're, they're placing bets on what the stock will do. And they're reinforcing those bets with the amount of money that they have at their disposal to either buy or sell the stock or short the stock. And in doing so, it causes wild price swings in the stock. Now, you and I, can we do that? I know I can't. You probably can't do that either. And what I'm getting at is that the stock market 
is still kind of the wild, wild west when it comes to trading. And if you're giving your money over to a financial planner, you are hoping that that financial planner is making good decisions on your part to invest your money because you're trying to grow that money over time to build up a big nest egg for that day in the future, somewhere in the future where you're going to stop working and you're going to live off of that money. You're going to start pulling that money out and maybe you change the type of investing you're doing. Maybe you convert from, you know, riskier stocks, so-called riskier stocks that have more potential for growth. And you start converting over to other types of stocks that are not growth stocks that maybe pay dividends. Or maybe you start moving your money into bonds because bonds have a tendency to pay a pretty steady rate of return, which you know may not be very much, but it tends to be steady. It's less risky. Yeah. But the problem is this. You don't control that stock market any more than I control it. And the, the big players that can manipulate stocks, they don't care about you and they don't care about me. They only care about their bottom line. And I believe that there is a war going on between some of these big players with regards to GameStop. And if you're in the middle of that war, you could get slaughtered. You absolutely could. Now, just in the few moments that I've been talking to you, GameStop dropped as low as $233. It's back up to $239. Well, they're $240. That's crazy, folks. That's absolutely crazy. Now, let me tell you what's going on in my world. Today is the first day of the month. Why is that significant? Because today is rent day. Rents are due on all of my properties, single family or multifamily, in accordance with all the lease agreements that have been executed with my residents. So today, I just I periodically check my different accounts and make sure that my residents have paid me because that's the deal I have with them. I provide you clean, functional workforce housing that is better than anything else in the marketplace that you've looked at, and I'm going to maintain that property and give you a beautiful place to live. In exchange for that, you're going to pay me rent on the first of the month. That's the way the business works. Now, that rent doesn't jump around the way the stock market jumps around. It's a fixed price that was agreed upon between the resident and myself when we entered into a business relationship. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not looking at my rent income going, well, let's see, the last month they paid 1400 so today maybe they'll pay 1425 but maybe if the market moves, they'll pay me 1350 That's not the way it works. I'm working with fixed assets that are providing me fixed rates of income on my properties. And when I pay all the associated expenses with operating those properties, what is left over is passive income. The reason it's called passive income is because I'm not going to the house, knocking on the door, collecting a rent check, and then inspecting the house, and then going back on day two and inspecting the house, going back on day three and walking around the house to go back. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. See, I have a business unit that I put into place. I have a business relationship with somebody who is desiring to occupy that space, and they're providing me the agreed upon rents without the volatility of the stock market. Now, if something breaks on the property, okay, there could be an additional expense, which could have an impact on my monthly cash flow. But because I fixed all of my properties up to new or like new condition, stuff really doesn't break. And it's a good thing. We come back from the break. I'm going to talk a little bit about the numbers. Stick around. Warning. 
listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So check this out. The Wall Street Journal made a statement, which I think is pretty, pretty powerful. And they said this. They said, an entity known as Melvin Capital. Now, this is a, a big organization that brings in a lot of money from investors and people that put their money into the stock market. It's money is funneled there from financial planners, yada, yada, yada. Don't want to get into who they are or what they are. But I want you to understand this. They lost 53% in January, according to the Wall Street Journal, hurt by GameStop and other bets. Now, I think the key word there is bets. Having grown up in Las Vegas, Nevada, I am very well aware of what gambling is. I mean, as, as a kid growing up in Las Vegas, going to school in Las Vegas, uh, attending the original Las Vegas High School, which is still downtown in Las Vegas, I could not help but be exposed to gambling. And when I see a reputable entity like the Wall Street Journal say something with regards to investing and calling it bets, I, t I tell you what, I can't help but put two and two together. See, this entity, Melvin Capital, lost 53% of their valuation in January because they were doing something with regards to game, stop, stock, and other plays that they made in the marketplace. There's another entity, Citadel, its partners, and, a, and an entity called Point72 took losses from their investment in a hedge fund. Now, it goes on to say this. And, I, and I'm paraphrasing a lot of this, so just work with me here. I think what you need to hear is what I'm about to say. It started the year with about $12.5 billion. That's right. They were managing $12.5 billion. And now they're managing about $8 billion. I mean, simple math tells me that $4.5 billion dollars was erased from that entity. Now, in the stock market, the way it works, you have to have two people or two entities to make a trade or make a bet. And one of the things that I learned way back in the day when I started investing in the stock market, because I thought that was one of the avenues I needed to pursue in order to accumulate wealth. One of the things that I learned, and it, and it sticks with me today, is the concept that when... I, me, Al, makes a play or a bet in the stock market, the odds are that the entity that trades with me probably knows more about what's going on in the stock market than I do. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I was worried about my ego, I'd feel bad about that statement. But I think it's important to know that, I mean, there are people out there that contribute all their time and energy to trying to analyze the stock market. And if you're working hard in your day-to-day -day job, you're putting in 40, 50, 60, whatever hours a week, and you're trying to trade in the stock market, you're kind of outgunned. Now, I'm not saying you can't be successful. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying that. And if you are successful, hey, you know what? I'll give you a virtual high five. But one of the things that I learned when I was trading in the stock market was that no matter how careful I was, how much analysis I did, how comfortable I felt with investing in a particular stock. I always had to be leery of market corrections. I had to be leery of something that would occur in the market that would have a negative impact on my investment. Now, one of the ways that stock traders protect their, their bets or their plays in the marketplace is they will set what's called a, a stop loss. So in other words, if a stock falls in value by a certain amount that you determine, maybe 6%, maybe 8%, whatever your number is, that would trigger a sell action 
and it was designed to help preserve your capital. So in other words, if something happened and, and you weren't even aware of it, and that stock that you were riding up slowly all of a sudden dropped in price, that stop loss order would trigger and put your shares available for sale in the marketplace. And if there was a buyer out there, that buyer would buy those shares and you would be out of your position. Here's the other thing you need to know about these stop losses. Volatility of individual stocks can be dramatic. And sometimes when a stock price falls, it does so because an entity is selling its positions. But then another entity with even more money and more of an interest in buying that stock sees that that, that stock just went on sale and they inject money into the system and buy up all the stuff. And I've seen it happen and I've had it happen to me where I've had a stock that let's say traded at $100 a share. And let's say I put in a stop loss saying 8%. So if that stock went down 8%, it would trigger the sell order and I would be preserved. I would, I would get at least $92 per stock back. But because that volatility triggered another entity to come back in, that stock actually went up to like $105 by the time trading it ended. But here's the problem. I sold at $92. I'm out of the position. Now, if I want to buy back in, it's $105 to get back into a stock that I had owned at $100. And I can't control that. And neither can you. And neither can your financial planner. And all this garbage going on with GameStop stock is just proof positive to me, and it should be to you, that investing in the stock market is like gambling. Because you don't know what the future holds. And I don't care how much predictive analysis is done out there. And by the way, all these stock entities and financial planners and stuff will tell you that past performance is not indicative of future results or something along those lines. In other words, what they're telling you is, yeah, we try and use our crystal ball, but you know what? Yeah, the crystal balls don't really work. Now, with real estate investing, it is a different animal. It is a completely different animal. Real estate is not as exciting as betting in the stock market, nor is it as exciting as going to Las Vegas and hanging out for a weekend. Now, nah, let me tell you how boring my day has been. Okay, I've checked my, my rental accounts. The majority of my residents have already paid the rent. I still got the rest of the day. And if somebody misses the payment, I just casually send them a text saying, hey, just want to make sure everything's okay, which usually triggers in my, whoops, forgot to make the rent payment, and everything is good. We come back from the break. We're going to talk about you. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. So on Friday, GameStop stock, it closed after a volatile trading day. Actually, it had been a pretty volatile week. Not pretty. A very volatile. It closed at... $325. Now, when it opened today, it gapped down, meaning it started trading for less money than it had traded for in the previous trading cycle. And it wasn't much. It was three bucks. It opened at $322. Now, in the short time that the stock market has been operating today, that stock has moved in price dramatically not not quite as dramatically as what it did last week but it's still jumping all over the place what do i mean by that well and let me just give you some of the data remember i said it gapped down and opened at 322 dollars well from there it went down to a low of 213 dollars and seven cents now as of right now as i speak it's up to 232 dollars that price is moving everywhere. I mean, remember when I opened the show, I think I said the price was around 250. Now it's at 230. So it's it's down $20 per share. Do you want to invest in that? I mean, are you sitting there thinking, "Oh, I, I got to be a part of that. 
I can make money on the movement of the stock. Yeah, you could. And you could get slaughtered in the process. And the thing with GameStop stock is that for a very long time, it was just kind of humming along, doing its thing. And then all of a sudden in January, the price started ticking up. And I'm not going to get into a diatribe of why that occurred, but it caught the attention of major players in the marketplace. And those major players have been literally at war for a week. Buying positions, shorting positions, selling positions, recovering, whatever they're doing. It's causing the stock price to go all over the place. And there are speculators out there in the marketplace that are trying to time this. They're trying to say, okay, what I want to do is I want to get into this stock maybe right about now, right when it's about $235 a share. Because I think in the next hour, it's going to bounce back up to that $320 per share. How do you know that? What tells you that that price of stock is even achievable again? How do you know that this stock just didn't like ramp up to a massive price because you had all this volume coming into the marketplace and now it's just going to fall back down to where it was? It's a feeding frenzy out there. Now, the entire stock market is not doing that. So I'm not trying to paint a picture that you need to be scared and you need to call your financial planner and you need to sell everything you've got. I am not painting that picture because you shouldn't do anything with investing unless you know exactly what you're trying to do. Now, last month, I talked to you about the importance of planning. I talked to you about the significance of creating your own personal five-year plan. I talked to you about setting goals and based on those goals, you create objectives Maybe you took me seriously and you actually took what I said to heart. Or maybe you just said, yeah, you know, it's just a guy on the radio. I'm just passing time driving. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you haven't done anything in the past 31 days, and it's now February, you've lost a month. You've lost a month of time, a month of your life, where you could have been changing the direction you're heading in. You could have formulated a plan that would help you achieve retirement within the next five years. Retirement is not an age, in spite of what the government wants you to believe, in spite of what society wants you to believe, in spite of what your financial planner wants you to believe. Retirement is a number. It's as simple as that. And that number is this. When you have income streams coming in based on businesses that you establish, and the fact that you're not working Massive hours in those businesses. The income that's produced based on the fact that you set the business model up and you're operating the business model correctly and not spending a lot of time doing it is called passive income. And when you have enough of that passive income coming in that it meets or exceeds your expenses in life, whatever those are, you've achieved retirement. Last week I had Brian on the show. I really like Brian. He's, he's a really cool cat. He grew up in Hawaii. Got one of those six-figure jobs in medical sales. Got married. Beautiful wife. She got herself a good job. She made really good money. So you think about it. They're probably making at least 200 k in income, but they're living in Hawaii. And he takes a job transfer. So he leaves Hawaii, and he leaves a very high cost of living. And he goes to a place called Atlanta with a much lower cost of living. Now, he's still making the same amount of money. His quality of life became so much better. Because he didn't have to feed as much money to a mortgage in order to provide the household that he chose to provide for his family. And along the way, he discovered Lifestyles Unlimited. Now, he had been investing in real estate as a young man. So he had a keen interest in learning how to do it better. To learn a process that would allow him not only to operate his existing assets more effectively, but provided him an opportunity to start upscaling his business, to start investing in large multifamily apartment communities. And after he started doing that, six months into that, his job said, you know what? Time for you to go. Laid him off. Now, a lot of people would be very, very upset that that happened. Because, I mean, you think about it. He's making six figures a year. That money, poof, gone. But because he was successfully investing in real estate, and that real estate was providing him passive income, he was able to absorb that shock. As a matter of fact, he said to me, and he said it to you on this radio show, that was probably the best thing that ever happened to him because it freed him of his bond 
to corporate America and gave him the freedom to dedicate his time to building his real estate business and build it, he did. He owns well over 2,000 units of multifamily. Half of those units are as a lead investor. Half of those units are as a passive investor in other real estate assets. He has more than replaced his income streams. And because he's a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, he believes in helping other people. That's why he came on the radio show. He didn't have to do that, but he wants to help you. And I want to help you too. I want you to understand that there is actually a better way to achieve retirement. And if you haven't even considered retirement, you definitely need to look at what we do. Because if you're not even looking at what retirement is for you, you don't even have a plan for it, you don't want to get there and find out that it's too late. So take a look at what we do. Take a look at what we can teach you. Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. That's freeworkshoplivestream.com. And remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Have a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.